Hello everyone, welcome to the video on sympathetic nervous system and in this video I am going to explain about adrenergic agonists which are also known as sympathomimetics. Mimetic word is derived from mimicry. Drugs which will imitate sympathetic nervous system neurotransmitter actions are called as sympathomimetics. In this video I am going to explain about the sympathetic responses, neurotransmission, receptors and about adrenergic agonists. This is my YouTube channel. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share the video. Let's get into the topic. Now, sympathetic system is also known as thoracic and lumbar system. The reason is sympathetic neuron outflow starts from thoracic region as well as lumbar region of the central nervous system. That is the reason why it is known as thoracic and lumbar responses. In case of cholinergic system, it is known as craniosacral. The reason why it is called as craniosacral, the neurons starts from cranium as well as sacral region. Now, when you see the responses of this sympathetic system, it is a two, two neuron system. A preganglionic neuron is there, postganglionic neuron is there. If you observe, the preganglionic neurons are short, anatomically they are short, whereas postganglionic neurons are longer neurons. Now, four different types of neurons are there. Now, the, uh, the one with a single, see, one exception is there. In sympathetic nervous system, there is a one neuron system is there. The neuron, it goes to adrenal medulla. The neuronal stimulation results in the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the blood circulation. Remember, the neurotransmitter here is acetylcholine. In fact, for all preganglionic neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Now, here, it will be acting on nicotinic receptors. So, the stimulation of adrenal medulla with sympathetic branch results in the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the blood. See, the highest amount will be of epinephrine, whereas 20% of norepinephrine. The difference between these two is epinephrine is a hormone, whereas norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter. This is one type. Now, the next one, the majority of the neurons are a preganglionic, postganglionic neurons will be going to all visceral organs. The neurotransmitter is norepinephrine it will be acting on alpha and beta receptors. One more exception is there. A neuron which is known as sympathetic cholinergic fiber, the reason why it is called as cholinergic fiber is, at postganglion neuron, the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Unlike norepinephrine, it is acetylcholine. Hence, it is known as sympathetic cholinergic fiber. And this innervation goes to sweat glands. So, this is what uh, exceptions for sympathetic nervous system. One, a single neuron system goes to adrenal medulla. A, a post ganglion neuron acetylcholine is released for sweat gland innervation. And that is known as sympathetic cholinergic fiber. <clears throat> now, sympathetic responses, they dominate during physical or emotional stress. They are known as E situations. Like when we do exercise, when we are in emotions, when there is an emergency, when there is an excitement, what all the body responses are there, they are known as sympathetic responses. They are also popularly known as fight or flight response. Understand this one. When body prepares to fight or when body prepares to run away, flight means not aeroplane here, it is running away from the dangerous situation. In both the situations, you need energy to do the action. And that is related to sympathetic responses. Let me explain it briefly. See, what, what all the uh, actions are there means, whenever sympathetic nervous system is activated, pupils dilate. It is called as mitriasis. Lungs dilate. Why do they dilate? When lungs dilate, more amount of oxygen is inhaled. With the more amount of oxygen, more amount of ATP is synthesized. Because you need energy either to fight or to flight. So that is how this response is there. Now the next one is <clears throat> heart, increased heart rate. When heart rate is increased, blood circulation to muscles increases because you need mus the muscles require energy. How do they get energy? From glucose and oxygen. Both of them will release ATP. Now blood vessels will constrict and BP increases. This is also required. Now remaining things like gastrointestinal tract, bladder and uterus, all of them will relax because you don't need them when you are doing when you are in a fight or in a flight condition. The other major thing is this one. See, liver converts glycose into glucose. This is called as glycogenolysis. That means glycogen is broken down and it releases glucose. The glucose is what? Provides ATP energy. So, when you see the system, the system broadly increases the amount of energy so that body is ready to fight or flight. This is what, these are all the major responses of sympathetic nervous system. Moving further, when you, you need to understand about neurotransmission. 
see all these neurotransmission occurs at the end of neuron this is what is the end of neuron it all starts with a tyrosine amino acid now look at the structure tyrosine is para hydroxy phenyl alanine see this is phenyl ring the rest of amino acid is known as alanine so in combination this is phenyl alanine to this phenyl alanine if a para place hydroxy group is there it is known as tyrosine now tyrosine in presence of enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase hydroxylase is means what adding one more oh group results in dopa dopa means dihydroxyphenyl alanine so this part is phenyl alanine and two hydroxy groups are there hence it is known as dihydroxyphenyl alanine now what happens next there is an enzyme called as decarboxylase decarboxylase means removal of this carboxylic acid group and it results in this one this is known as dopamine see dopa is an amino acid amine is there acid is there whereas dopamine is only amine because carboxylic acid is removed now after that there is an enzyme called <coughs> excuse me dopamine beta hydroxylase now understand this one the functional group is amine this one is alpha carbon and the other one is beta carbon so dopamine at beta carbon place hydroxylation occurs this is what is that hydroxyl group is and when dopamine at beta position is hydroxylated this is what gives norepinephrine norepinephrine is also known as noradrenaline so in neurons this is what synthesized and stored in vesicle in case of adrenal medulla one more step occurs this norepinephrine is converted to epinephrine look at the enzyme phenyl ethanolamine n methyl transfer is that means to this n a methyl is transferred and that is what becomes epinephrine if you remember epinephrine is a hormone norepinephrine is neurotransmitter so in neurons the synthesis occurs only till here whereas in adrenal medulla this additional steps goes on so when you see the synthesis norepinephrine is synthesized stored in vesicle whenever there is a signal is there norepinephrine releases now two more important things inside the neuron norepinephrine is metabolized by monoamine oxidase enzyme look at this this is an amine group monoamine oxidase means this single amine will get oxidized that is what is the job of this enzyme is now outside the neuron there is one more enzyme is there that metabolizes norepinephrine that is COMT catechol O methyl transferase so this moiety a phenyl ring with two adjacent hydroxy group is known as catechol group now to this catechol group if a methyl group is transferred methyl group is transferred that is what is catechol o methyl transferase enzyme does so two metabolizing enzymes one monoamine oxidase two catechol o methyl transferase now once norepinephrine is released it will be acting on alpha and beta receptors or it can act on auto receptor which is present on the same neuron or it is reuptaken back into the neuron with the help of reuptake transporters so this is about biosynthesis and release of noradrenaline or norepinephrine one more important thing see inside the vesicle only you have dopamine beta hydroxylase enzyme is present see i told you uh, the synthesis after synthesis it is stored in the vesicle but inside the vesicle itself you have this one that is the reason why it is known as vesicular dopamine beta hydroxylase remember this one moving further now some of the important drugs see tyrosine to dopa conversion is by tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme and that enzyme is inhibited by metyrosine it is nothing but methyl tyrosine which competitively inhibits this enzyme so the enzyme for the enzyme there is a chance to bind with either tyrosine or methyl tyrosine when it binds with methyl tyrosine the conversion of dopa is inhibited next one reserpine long term it is used to treat hypertension now what this reserpine does is when people take this reserpine it replaces norepinephrine from the vesicle norepinephrine comes out what happens in outside there is an enzyme called monoamine oxidase that metabolizes norepinephrine so reserpine results in decreased levels of norepinephrine that is the reason why it also causes depression so nowadays reserpine is not used because it is causing prominent depression moving further see the release from here is also inhibited by guanathidine whereas reuptake is inhibited by cocaine and tricyclic antidepressants see depression is because of reduced levels of norepinephrine how can you increase by inhibiting reuptake mechanism when you inhibit that norepinephrine level increases this is how tricyclic antidepressants acts cocaine also does the same thing it inhibits the reuptake so levels of norepinephrine is increased that is what causes excitation moving further now see the prominent effects I'll, i'll tell you the prominent effects just remember them we have four prominent receptors are there alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 now alpha 1 it is present on blood vessels 
the prominent action is vasoconstriction that means blood vessels are constricted what is the effect of that increased blood pressure in the eye also they cause midriasis pupil dilation these are the major effects of alpha 1 receptors now alpha 2 inhibition of norepinephrine receptors because it is present on the same same see this is alpha 2 receptor now what happens is when norepinephrine acts on the receptor it inhibits look at this minus means inhibition the biosynthesis of norepinephrine <coughs> sorry so activating alpha 2 receptors reduces the levels of norepinephrine so this is what is given here so inhibition of norepinephrine release now beta 1 the prominent place is heart it increases heart rate tachycardia it increases cardiac contractility increases release of renin all of them are cardiotonic actions increased cardiac act activities now beta 2 they are mostly present on bronchial tree and causes bronchodilation that is the reason why to treat asthma and COPD B2 agonists are used along with that it is also present on liver so it causes liver glycogenolysis which increases the levels of glucose it is also present in uterine which causes relaxation of uterine smooth muscle so these are all the prominent effects now looking at the receptors all these receptors are G protein coupled receptors alpha 1 is a type of GQ coupled it increases phospholipase C increases inositol triphosphate increases diacylglycerol and calcium release whereas alpha 2 <coughs> is GI coupled G inhibitory reduces adrenal cyclase reduces cyclic AMP whereas beta 1 beta 2 and D1 all of them are GS coupled G stimulatory increases adrenal cyclase increases cyclic AMP so these are all the important effects in this now <coughs> when you see the adrenergic agonist they can be classified as directly acting drugs mixed acting drugs indirectly acting drugs understand this one when an agent is directly acting on receptors it is known as directly acting drugs when an agent is not acting on receptor but causing mimetic action it is called as indirect acting so direct acting these drugs will be directly acting on receptors again in that you have selective and non-selective group are there selective means it is acting only on a particular receptor like phenylephrine it acts the the prominent action is on only alpha 1 receptor clonidine is an alpha 2 beta 1 selective to dobutamine terbutaline selectively acts on beta 2 receptors <coughs> non-selective these drugs will be acting on multiple receptors like alpha 1 alpha 2 will get activated by oxymetazoline beta 1 beta 2 will be by isoproterenol all the four receptors are activated by epinephrine which is hormone alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 are prominently activated by norepinephrine which is a neurotransmitter now the other class we will see the mixed class next but let us see this indirectly acting class releasing agents this amphetamine and tyramine when they are taken they increase the release of norepinephrine now just now we have seen about cocaine what does cocaine does it inhibits reuptake when reuptake is inhibited norepinephrine available to its synaptic left increases now monoamine oxidase COMTR metabolizing enzymes when you inhibit them norepinephrine levels increases monoamine oxidase inhibitors salicylene COMT inhibitors entacopone tolcopone now mixed acting drugs like ep ephedrine C they act on receptors as well as they increase the levels of norepinephrine hence they are called as mixed acting receptors now finally the important drugs see pressor agents means which are causing vasoconstriction especially their action is on alpha 1 noradrenaline ephedrine dopamine phenylephrine methoxamine mephentermine all of them specifically act on alpha 1 and causes increased hypertension they press the blood vessel hence they are known as pressor action now bronchodilators especially it is on beta 2 receptors all of these drugs are used to treat asthma or COPD CNS stimulants which act on central nervous system like amphetamine dexamphetamine methamphetamine all of them CNS stimulants uterine relaxants again they belong to beta 2 category which relaxes uterine tract retrodrine isoxoprine salbutamol terbutaline cardiac stimulant beta 1 receptor agents like adrenaline isoprenaline dobutamine nozzle decongestants again alpha 1 selective drugs they cause vasoconstriction and reduces decongestion xylometazoline oxymetazoline nafzoline phenylephrine all of them now anorexics are a new class <coughs> i'm sorry anorexicants will reduce the appetite like amphetamine 
phenylfluoramine, dexphenylfluoramine, sibutramine, all these are. So all these are important drugs in heterogeneity categories. All of them are sympathomimetics. They imitate the actions of sympathetic neurotransmitters. So this is about heterogeneity agonist drugs. Thank you. Mm, these are all some of the important uh, drugs like norepinephrine and epinephrine are used to treat cardiac arrest. They are used as an adjunct to treat local end sticks. They are used to treat hypotension because they, they increase blood pressure. And they are also used to treat anaphylaxis and asthma. Phenylephrine is a popular decongestant. Like dobutamine, all these beta 2 active drugs are used to treat congestive heart failure. Beta 2 agonists, albutamol, albutrol, terbutalin, all of them are used to treat asthma. Whereas terbutalin and ritodrine are used in premature level because they are uterine relaxants. So this is about uh, sympathetic agonist. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe and share.